So uh, again, thank you all for being here this morning. My name is Logan Lapierre. I'm the program manager with the Tri-City Regional Chamber of Commerce. Um, uh, I'm really excited today. We have a great program set up talking about PPP round three. Um, obviously there's a lot going on with PPP since this program started back over the summer. Lots of updates have been rolled out. There's a lot of uh, important things to make note of and some changes. So um, we have invited a few people from the Washington State Small Business Development um, Council Center, sorry, apologies, and Rebecca Dobbs with Spokane Teachers Credit Union or STCU. Um, with that, I, again, if you have any questions, make sure you use the chat or the Q&A and we'll get to those as soon as we possibly can. Um, I'm gonna stop talking now and uh, turn things over to Cheryl McGrath. Well, thank you, Logan. It is a real pleasure for us to be with all of you today. My name is Cheryl McGrath, and I am the Associate State Director for the Washington Small Business Development Center. I am located in Spokane, but just an FYI, we've got 26 locations throughout the state, so we serve every county. We've got 33 certified business advisors, four associate business advisors, and six program specialists to serve the small business community. And we're extremely proud of our partnership with the Tri-Cities Regional Chamber, as well as with STCU. We were talking about that um, before we went live, but I am just here to, to learn and absorb along with everybody else. And it gives me great pleasure first to introduce John Morasco, who is located in Wenatchee, and he is one of our uh, certified business advisor. So microphone to you, John, and then I will introduce Ron in a second. Okay, thank you. And uh, really love um, being here today and enjoying uh, being part of the PPP discussion. Uh, to let you know, anybody that has a business, I am covering and assisting in covering the Tri-Cities area as a certified business um, advisor. So if you have questions about PPP or you'd like to, you know, as we get the vaccine going, I'm encouraging all businesses to start looking at how you can scale up for the eventual reopening and jump back in. So looking at your finances and we're, we're here to help. I'm going to, in the uh, chat box, I'm putting in uh, information about myself and phone number and email address. Also, tomorrow, if somebody is wanting to look at uh, building um, and going after um, uh, contracts for government contracts, I'm doing a roundtable with Jody O'Connor, uh, who is the PTAC counselor, PTAC uh, standing for Procurement Technical Assistance Center. The two of us are actually doing a uh, a webinar tomorrow. So if you want information, we're doing that jointly. And uh, uh, Jody is just fantastic. And I thank the chamber for having Jody there. And we have a pretty good alliance going between us. And I'm sorry, my, I'm going to put her information in. If you'd like to join that uh, webinar tomorrow, just send her an email and she'll get you connected. So with that, I'm going to turn it back to Cheryl and um, I guess, Cheryl, you're going to introduce however you're going to do it. <laughs> however I'm going to do it. Yeah, again, um, pleasure to be here. And now it gives me great joy to introduce Ron Nielsen, who is also located in Wenatchee, but he serves as our Eastern Washington State Regional Manager. So he provides direct oversight for Every every office location and all of our advisors uh, this side of the Cascade Mountain. So, Ron, microphone back to you. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, John, just just quickly, your background comes from what? Uh, you, you come from the hospitality industry, is that correct? Yes, uh, forty years in hotel, restaurant, and tourism, and also as a nursing home administrator. So, I have healthcare and hospitality background. And I've also owned three small businesses. So I, I learned from the bottom up is for anybody in the hospitality industry, my favorite, my favorite line is I've cleaned more toilets in my career than I ever care to talk about. <laughs> well, thank you, John. And you also have experience in the restaurant industry. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, I've, owned a, I've owned a restaurant and 
managed uh, again we did banquets um, one one banquet that I did back at the old Conrad Hilton in Chicago was for 7,000 people and that was for President Ford so I've been there done <laughs> Well, thank you, John. Appreciate that. And you mentioned Jody O'Connor, uh, and she is out of the Tri Cities Regional Chamber Office. Is that correct? That's correct. She's uh, she's does a fabulous job. And thank you, as I was saying, thank you, Tri Cities Chamber, for having her there. So we we work together. Great. Thank you. And just a, a quick shout out to Rebecca. Uh, good to see you here this morning, Rebecca. Good morning. Happy to be here. And uh, Logan, I'm assuming you're going to uh, have a, a portion for uh, Rebecca here shortly after. Do you want to do something with her now uh, afterwards? Yes, if you guys want to take it from here. Um, and then once you're wrapped up, we will hand it over to Rebecca. Awesome. Now, Rebecca, I'll, I'll try and get through this quick. We have 33 slides. There's a lot to talk about when we talk about this you know, first draw, second draw, 2020, uh, 2021. So I'll go through it. Uh, anytime you wish to chime in, Rebecca, and add additional content, feel free. Okay, and, no uh, rush, it's a lot of information to digest for sure. Yeah, there is. So I'll, I'll go ahead and get started. I'll, I'll share my screen. And by the way, Rebecca, you're located where? Located in the Tri-Cities. In the Tri-Cities, wonderful. Yeah. You have offices uh, throughout the, the uh, Tri-Cities region? Yep, we have three retail branches in our commercial banking center. Very good, thank you. So this morning, uh, I'm going to be covering the information on the most recently uh, enacted uh, Economic Aid Act uh, from December 27th. There's a lot of information here about both the uh, past uh, PPP as well as the uh, current 2021 uh, first draw, second draw. I also have a small section where I'll be talking about the shuttered venue grant uh, uh, process and in, in, in that program. I'll also have a little bit of information for you about the uh, economic injury disaster loan, the EIDL, and the EIDL grant portion as, as well. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and get rolling here. So our, our first slide is just going to be a, a quick overview of what's happened thus far. So the uh, PPP program as of February 21st, uh, Washington State has done really well in the PPP program. Uh, both the 2020-2021 uh, uh, first and, and now what could be second draw for some of you, the total loans uh, for Washington State thus far, uh, almost three and a half billion dollars in Washington State with a total of uh, 35,798 loans. We're 11th uh, in the way of, of dollars distributed among all states in the nation. The nationwide numbers for the uh, first and second draw at, at 140 billion, just over 140 billion with a million nine hundred thousand loans. And if you see this next portion here, and by the way, these slides will be available to all of you uh, after the webinar. The uh, loan size by, by numbers nationwide, 71%, almost 72% are 50,000 or less, 12% uh, are between 50,000 and 100,000, 6% between 100,000 and 150,000. And this makes 89.7% uh, of the loans less than 150,000 has been distributed nationwide. The overall nationwide uh, loan size $73,114. Again, that was as of uh, Saturday. This next slide is kind of hard to see, but what I want to draw your attention to here is the fact that there is a, a number of uh, lending institutions as part of this process now. It's been greatly expanded from when the PPP was first introduced last year. Uh, the very bottom portion talks about first and second loan draws how many loans have been approved, the net, uh, net dollars, average loan size. But what I want to point out again is that there's now a number of uh, uh, community financial institutions, along with uh, insured depository institutions, as well as credit unions. And a new addition uh, for this uh, newest legislation is the farm credit service institutions. 
uh, being able to make uh, PPP loans to agricultural interests. So today I'm going to cover the key elements of the new 2020 Paycheck Protection Program. I'll be giving you information about the updated uh, details, including new legislation with a, a focus on uh, the importance of accuracy. And I'm gonna stress this a number of times as we go through here to help your lenders be able to successfully process your information uh, and then in turn submit it to the SBA. Uh, there's a, uh, the burden really is on us business owners to make sure that we have our information uh, in order, that it's accurate and it, it matches all of our documents. I'm gonna cover that again here shortly. I'm gonna talk about uh, some of the other new elements of, of the legislation specifically for underserved and low income communities. We're gonna to touch on the most current information uh, about when and where to apply for the loans. A little bit about the economic injury disaster loan, the idle, and then where to seek additional assistance for one-on-one -on -one advising. Okay, so the information provided in this presentation is relevant as of this morning. It was recent. It was updated as recently as, as uh, five o'clock last night. Neither the presenters nor the Washington Small Business Development Centers are the final authority on this on this material. The information is subject to change at any time with new legislation and or additional rules from the U.S. Treasury Department and the U.S. Small Business Administration. We do update this this. Uh, information as it becomes available, uh, both in the way of uh, information uh, from Treasury and the SBA as guidance uh, is available. If you have any questions, uh, particular questions, uh, as always, we would refer you to your CPA or your attorney or similar tax professionals for advice uh, regarding how these, these programs may Im impact your specific business. The purpose of this presentation is to assist small business owners with their use of the programs established by the federal legislation and is also to help technical assistance providers supporting bilingual and underserved communities so that they can better assist their small business owners that they work with. Okay, things to do to get ready. Uh, one of the first things we recommend is find and review your 2019 tax return. In addition to that, uh, print out uh, an updated 2019 and 2020 profit and loss statement. Determine your highest average monthly payroll from either calendar year 2019 or 2020 or the last 12 months prior to the loan application. You may need evidence of changes in gross revenue from 2019 to 2020. Other documents that you will need later would be bank accounts, third-party payroll records, W-2, W-3 forms, tax forms such as your 941, copies of funds transfers from ACH and checks, state wage reporting documents for unemployment and labor and industry, the employer portion of health insurance, retirement plans, and state and local taxes, payment receipts, and canceled checks or account statements. If you'll be applying for a second draw PPP, you will need a loan number from the first PPP, accurate EIN, business name, and owners is being cross-checked. Now this is part of the uh, effort by the SBA as mandated by Congress to check uh, the information up front now versus uh, for the first round in 2020 of the PPPs, information was uh, basically self-attested, submitted to the lenders, and then the information was verified when you submitted your uh, loan forgiveness application. This time this information is being checked up front. So this is important that you have this information uh, uh, that represents the most accurate and, and best uh, or current information about your business. One of the issues we ran into with, with some business owners already that applied for a first round PPP and was successful and are now applying for a second round, I had a business owner that changed from a sole proprietor to a LLC. That, that's a complete change of your legal structure. 
And it, it created, as you can imagine, a red flag right off the bat. And it's, it's taken some time to work through this uh, dilemma to try and get this changed. I'm going to be addressing this more in some later slides. OK, for first draw PPP loans, business entities who did not receive a PPP uh, P loan in 2020, uh, first priority goes to first time PPP borrowers, including minority owned, veteran owned, woman owned, and businesses in underserved markets. You must show that you were in operation on or before February 15, 2020. Maximum loan amount is $10 million. Affiliation alliances may apply. And you may not have more than 500 employees per physical location, 300 for housing cooperatives, 501c6s, and destination marketing organizations. Loan amounts are based on two and a half times the average monthly payroll in 2019 or prior to 2015, 2020. This extends the time of the PPP application uh, program to March 31st, so the end of next month, and appropriates 284.45 billion in funds for this program. There are narrow circumstances where a lender of record can increase the first, uh, first draw PPP loan, and we'll provide additional information on this at a later point in time. The second draw, eligibility for businesses that have used all their first, uh, first round, first draw PPP funds as of December 31st, you must have documented a 25% reduction in gross revenue on an annual basis or in any one of four quarters in 2020 as compared to 2019. The loan amount maximum draw is $2 million and you cannot have more than 300 employees. Again, that's, that's for this, the second draw or 2021 PPP. Only one second draw PPP is allowed. Loan amounts are based on two and a half times the average monthly payroll. Uh, there is a 3.5 times the average monthly payroll for accommodations and food services businesses, those that have a next code that starts with 7-2. Eligible entities are for-profit businesses, certain nonprofits, including 501c6s, housing cooperatives, veterans organizations, tribal businesses, self-employed individuals, sole proprietors, independent contractors, and small business agricultural cooperatives. Loan forgiveness for loans of 150,000 or less will use a new short form that has been updated in 2021. The form is one page and includes a description of the number of employees that were retained because of the PPP loan and the estimated total of the amount spent on payroll costs. The borrower will have to self-attest to certain certifications that demonstrate their compliance with the Paycheck Protection Program requirements. At least 60% of the PPP funds must be used for payroll still applies. Up to 30% of the PPP funds can apply to other allowable costs during the covered period. And I'll cover that more in detail in a moment. The covered period starts for all PPP loans on the date of funding. The covered period now ends at any date within the minimum of eight weeks or a maximum of 24 weeks. Additional uses for the new PPP loans allow certain operational expenses for business software and cloud computing for human resource and accounting systems, product and service delivery costs, supplier costs pursuant to a contract for goods and personal protective equipment, property damage caused by civil unrest is also allowed as a PPP expense. Payroll costs can include insurance, including life insurance, disability, health, vision, and or dental insurance. PPP loans made before or, or on or after enactment of the new legislation can use the expanded forgivable expenses unless the first PPP loan has already been forgiven. Borrowers who returned all or part of their PPP loans funds may reapply for a first draw PPP loan, and some can apply for an increase, but a certain narrow condition applies. 
you must apply for loan forgiveness for each PPP loan separately. Farmers and ranchers who operate as sole proprietors or uh, independent contractors, self-employed individuals may utilize their gross income from their uh, 2019 Schedule F as long as they were in business by or, or on February 15, 2020 to calculate their PPP loan uh, amount. Farm credit institutions can make PPP loans. A seasonal employer is one who operates for not more than seven months a year and earns no more than one third of its receipts in any six months in the prior calendar year. Housing cooperatives as defined in section 216B of IRS code are eligible. FCC license holders, media and newspapers, no more than 500 employees per location for first draw and 300 per location for second draw are eligible. 501C6, and destination marketing organizations are eligible if no more than 15% of the receipts and or activities are from lobbying and the cost of lobbying does not exceed $1 million in tax year prior to February 15th, 2020. Self-employed individuals and sole proprietors. Original PPP loan amount is calculated by taking the 2019 compensation from line seven of the individual's 2019 Schedule C, dividing by 12 and multiplying by 2.5. Ranchers and yet, uh, farmers and ranchers may use their Schedule F, line nine, for the same calculation. Loan forgiveness is based upon the use of funds provided at least 60% for payroll and no more than 40% for other allowable expenses. The amounts paid to owners do not exceed $15,385 per individual for those using the min minimum eight week covered period and $20,833 for those using the maximum 24 week covered period. The idle advance is no longer deducted from loan forgiveness. And boy, thank goodness, I was so relieved when I saw that that was part of the legislation. The new legislation repeals the CARES Act section that required the deduction of the idle advance from the PPP loan forgiveness amount. If the PPP loan has already been forgiven, the SBA will provide a reconciliation payment to the lender to pay down the outstanding PPP loan balance caused by the idle advance. The reconciliation payments to the lender started on February 9th and are expected to have already been completed last week. I, and at this moment, I'm not sure if there's any outstanding and, and we can talk more about that a little bit later. The new legislation establishes that PPP borrowers who receive the idle advance should be made whole without regard to whether those borrowers are eligible for PPP forgiveness. Tax provision expenses forgiven are now deductible expenses for uh, year ending tax reports. This was a recent change as well and one that was enacted by one of our own uh, state congressional members that uh, did make it into the uh, 20, uh, December 27th legislation. Gross business income does not include any amount that would otherwise arise from forgiveness of a PPP loan. Business tax deductions are allowed or, or for otherwise deductible expenses paid with proceeds of a PPP loan that is forgiven Gross business income does not include forgiveness of certain loans, emergency economic injury disaster grants, and certain loan repayment assistance, each as provided in the CARES Act. These provisions are effective as of the date of the CARES Act in 2020. Additional details, the covered period started for all PPP loans on the date of funding. The covered period now ends at any date within the minimum eight weeks or maximum of 24 weeks. Maximum allowed compensation per employee is $100,000 annually. As the basis for calculating the average monthly payroll, seasonal employers can determine the PPP loan amount based on any 12 week period between February 15, 2019 and February 15, 2020. For all new PPP loans, 
Documents are required at the time of application for the PPP loan, uh, over 150,000, and at the time of forgiveness for uh, loans that were under 150,000. PPP borrowers are required to retain all relevant records related to employment for four years and other records for three years. Okay, this is an area of importance for accuracy. Be sure and stay in touch with your first draw lender before you use a second lender to apply for a second round uh, PPP. The first draw lender may need to resolve some hold air codes. Lenders have new instructions as of February 8th to resolve certain errors and hold codes, including documents that are required to remove those hold and error codes. It is critical that the PPP loan, TIN, uh, EIN, social security number, business name, and, owners, uh, and owner application of the second draw match that of the first. If there's any discrepancies between that, that is going to cause a, an error uh, code to come up. Four common holds are mismatch of EINs and social security numbers, comparison of business names do not match, such as the example I gave you earlier about the one that went from a sole proprietor to an LLC. Uh, NAICS code does not match, owners do not match or are not correctly identified and public records do not show business activity uh, before February 15, 2020. If there is a first draw hold, it must be corrected by the first lender before a second draw can be approved with any lender. The new federal administration PPP information as of February 22nd states, there is an establishment now of a 14-day exclusive PPP loan application period for businesses and nonprofits with fewer than 20 employees. This starts at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, February 24th. This allows sole proprietors, independent contractors, and self-employed individuals to receive more financial support by revising the PPP's funding formula for these categories of applicants. The change in funding formula is to use the gross amount from line seven on your uh, IRS 1040 Schedule C rather than line 21. So this covers the gross receipts rather than the net receipts for the businesses of sole proprietors, independent contractors, and self-employed individuals. Businesses with PPP applications already submitted and have an existing hold uh, air code that can be cleared will continue to be processed. Uh, this eliminates the restriction on PPP access for small business owners with prior non-fraud uh, felony convictions. First and second draw PPP loans can now be processed for those with most other felony convictions. Uh, eliminated federal student debt uh, delinquencies and default as a disqualifier to participating in the PPP. The SBA will remove hold and error codes that would have prevented PPP loan processing as a result of student loan debt issues. Now, this ensures access for non citizen small business owners who are lawfully US resi residents by clarifying that they may use their individual tax identification or the ITIN to apply for the PPP. Small business owners with tax IDs of nine digits and begin with a nine are now eligible. This is a significant change from the first time or first uh, round in 2020. Hold codes um, apply to PPP loans of 2020 and must be cleared before forgiveness is provided. Compliance check error codes apply to PPP loans of 2021. Most of these apply to second draw PPPs. The SBA is reviewing public information as required by December 27th legislation to prevent fraud. Here's some of the issues that the lender can resolve. Hold error codes resulting from criminal history related to fraud, bankruptcy, business formation or sanction, application potentially uh, is deceased, business is dormant or inactive, TIN, 
slash business and or owners names are mismatched, a large number of employees at a residential location. Issues that the SBA will resolve are hold codes resulting from franchise review and eligible business size, business address, location is vacant, cannabis entities, debarred businesses, uh, those who have defaulted on SBA loans in the last seven years, payday lender, affiliate issues, duplicate tax ID, foreign country related, uh, and lobbying entities. Elements of the legislation specifically for underserved and low income communities, the SBA administrator must issue guidance addressing the barriers to access to capital for underserved communities. There's a set aside of $15 billion for, for PPP loans to be issued by community financial institutions, including CDFIs and minority deposit institutions. There's a set aside of 15 billion for PPP loans issued for certain other small depository institutions. There's a set aside of 35 billion for first time borrowers, 15 billion of which are for smaller first time borrowers and 10 with 10 or fewer employees, 25 billion for second draw loans for smaller borrowers and 10 for fewer with 10 or fewer employees or loans less than 250,000 in low income areas. 25 million for minority business development centers and 57 million for microloan programs. 3.5 billion for debt relief programs and bankruptcy provisions. The debt relief programs for those with existing five uh, 504 uh, loans, as well as the SBA 7A and microloans, the SBA will pay at least an additional three months of principal and interest starting uh, this month, 2021. Certain underserved businesses may receive an ad additional months. These payments will be capped at $9,000 per borrower uh, combined loans. Loan payments above that will be uh, above that will be the responsibility of the borrower to pay. Bankruptcy provisions establishes special procedures if the SBA administrator determines certain small business debtors are eligible for the PPP. It requires court approval for these PPP loans uh, for these debtors. 15 billion uh, is set aside for the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. And here's the things that will apply for them. If you want to apply for this, this uh, particular grant program when it opens, you must obtain a free DUNS number from Dun & Brand Street. For this, you will need your organizational name, the CEO, uh, chief officer name, legal structure, year started, primary type of business, and the number of employees. With the DUNS number, you then register on the SAMS, uh, uh, SAMS.gov, for this, you will need your DUNS number, bank information, taxpayer identification, average sales per year for the last three years, total staff, full-time and part-time for the last 12 months, primary points of contact for the business, phone, address, emails, your primary and other next codes. It takes 12 to 15 days for your registration to become active in SAM you will receive a commercial and government entity or CAGE code when it is active. So this is not gonna happen quickly. Uh, to get through both the, uh, the DUNS process and the SAMS process could take uh, you know, three weeks or more. So if this is something you're thinking about, uh, you would wanna be uh, moving on this quickly. And remember, I'm gonna cover this in a moment, but if you elect to, to apply for the uh, SVOG, as it's called, or the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant, you are not eligible to apply for the PPP. So you have to review which one of these two makes the best sense and then apply for the one that will help your business. Grants will be available to eligible live venue operators. Uh, and these operators are defined as having fixed seats, ticket sales, public promotions, or promoters, theatrical producers, live performing arts operators, museum operators, motion picture operators, and talent reps who demonstrate a revenue reduction. The processing priority will be as follows. The first 14 days of the program, grants will be awarded to venues with a 
minimum of a 90% reduction loss. The next 14 days, the second uh, 14 days will be awarded to venues with a minimum of a 70% loss of revenue. After 28 days, grants will be awarded to venues with less than a 70% reduction. At, at this time, honestly, it's anybody's guess of whether or not there'll be, even be funds available after the uh, first priority uh, 14 days, let alone the second, and even getting down to the third, but that is the structure of how it's set up at this time. Initial grants can be up to $10 million with a supplemental at 50% of the first grant, 2 billion set aside for entities with up to 50 full-time employees. Shuttered venue entities can receive this grant, but if they do, again, you are not eligible for the new PPP loan. This grant is ongoing to be administered by the SBA Office of Disaster Assistance or what we call the ODA. The grant amount in general will be 45% of gross earned revenue if in operation on January 1st, 2019. If the venue was in operation after January 1st, 2019, you calculate the average monthly gross revenue for each full month in operation during 2019 and multiply that by six. Applicants must have been in operation on February 29th, 2020 and must not have received a PPP loan in 2021. You can apply if you received an idle loan and or a PPP loan in 2020, the SVOG can be used for specific expenses broader than those allowed for the use of the PPP funds. The SBA will publicize the opening of the portal uh, for applications in advance. If you have any questions, you can email svogrant at sba.gov. Allowable uses of the SVOG would be to uh, pay for payroll costs, rent payments, utility payments, scheduled mortgage payments, scheduled debt payments on any indebtedness incurred in the ordinary course of business prior to February 15, 2020, worker protection expenditures, payments to independent contractors not exceeding the $100,000 cap, other ordinary and necessary business expenses including maintenance costs and administrative costs, including fees and licensing, state and local taxes and fees. Operating leases in effect as of February 15th, uh, 2020, insurance payments, advertising, production, transportation, capital expenditures, as related to producing a theatrical live performing arts production, not primary use of funds. Grantees may not use awarded funds to buy real estate, make payments on loans originated after February 15th of, of 2020, make investments or loans, make contributions or other payments on behalf of political parties, political committees, and candidates for election. The targeted idle advance program, there was 20 billion set aside for this. The SBA will reach out to those who qualified based on one, being located in a low income community as defined in section 45D, uh, subchapter E in the IRS code. Two, can demonstrate a 30% reduction in revenue during an eight week period after March 8th, 2020. Three, having previously applied for an idle advance prior to December 27th of 2020, and or did not receive the full $10,000 in 2020, having fewer or having 300 or fewer employees, sole proprietors, independent contractors, for-profit and non-profit organizations are eligible, but agricultural enterprises are not eligible. The SBA has sent out over 150,000 emails from sba.gov, and that's important. If it's, if it's coming to you from somewhere uh, other than sba.gov, it most likely is a fraudulent attempt. Uh, to those who have applied for the IDLE in 2020 and who have met the low income community criteria with information on how to apply for the targeted IDLE advance, determine eligibility and submit documentation. The covered period for use of the emergency idle grant runs to December 31st of this year. 
only prior idle applicants will be considered. Employee retention tax credit. This is a good option for those who cannot apply for a new PPP. Those who received a PPP can qualify for the ERTC for wages that are not forgiven with the PPP proceeds. Additional eligibility for full or partial reduction in business activity that may have resulted from government orders. The ERTC credit is a reduction in the amount due on the 941 and 940 reports of up to 70% of qualified wages. So this could be a significant benefit to you. Requires a year over year gross uh, revenue decline of 20% or more, establishes a credit limit of $10,000 per employee per quarter, allows businesses with 500 or fewer employees to advance the credit based on wages paid in the same quarter in a previous year. Additional information and rules on the ERTC are available and will be coming forth. We have a link on the, uh, to the IRS in the upcoming slide. So most current information and, and when and where to apply for PPP loans. We have several uh, links here for you. Uh, the first priority lender, uh, uh, community uh, finance institutions, CFIs, CDFIs, CDCs, and micro lenders, and minority deposit institutions started processing PPP loans the week of January 11th. The PPP program opens uh, to small businesses, uh, this is all in the past now, but it was on January 15th. A small lender is one with 1 billion or less in assets. The PPP loan opened to all uh, participating lenders on January 19th. All of the lenders are banks, credit unions, uh, farm, farm credit institutions. Lender Match on the SBA website will assist you if you are searching for a lender. Uh, we always recommend you start with the lender that you have an existing relationship with and then go from there. A local lender list is available at www.smallbizhelpwa.com. For first and second draw PPP loans, you must work with an approved uh, SBA PPP lender. The SBA Economic Injury uh, Disaster Loan, the IDLE update, the Idle Loan Program has been reauthorized uh, from this uh, 20, or from December 27th legislation and was extended to the end of this year or until funds are no longer available. They have an interest rate of 3.75% for profit businesses and 2.75% for nonprofit businesses, and they run for a 30 year term. Payments are deferred until 12 months, and there is no prepayment penalty. To apply for this, uh, we have the uh, address here of the link. Print each applicant page and verify for accuracy before moving to the next page. Extremely important. We, we've had a number of people we've helped that have, uh, again, inaccurately entered information that's come back to haunt us and, 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 and compel us to go back and correct all that before the information can then be processed by the SBA. Validate your deposit institution's routing number and your account number. Office of Disaster Assistant Customer Service is, and this is for any questions about your idle loan or idle advance, is 1-800-659-2955. Uh, you would call them to check the status of your idle loan. Uh, when you call that number, uh, the person that answers the phone is gonna be a tier one SBA representative. That person, she or he is not authorized to look up your information. So you must ask for a tier two person who then can look up your uh, information and give you a status update. To ask for idle reconsideration if your loan was denied or to request an increase in your loan amount, you'll send an email to pdcercons at sba.gov. You may be required to complete an SBA form uh, 3501 a statement of liabilities and update your uh, 4506T, which is the request for transcripts of your tax return. Be sure this information is accurate. Where to get additional information and support? 
We have a number of, of options here for you, technical assistance for non-English uh, speakers and underserved communities. Uh, uh, we have a link here for that. The Washington State Relief uh, Coordination resources, local lenders, technical assistance and training uh, can be found at smallbizhelpwa.com. Of course, one-on-one -on -one advising from the uh, Washington Small Business Development Centers uh, can be found at Washington at WSBDC.org, or you can contact us at 833-492-7232. Uh, uh, the SBA website at sba.gov can be converted uh, to 108 different languages with the translate button. Uh, there's the COVID resources uh, in other languages. Uh, we have the uh, links to that as well, websites for the PPP and frequently asked questions for those of us that have dealt with this you know, since back in March. That is one place that we've gone to frequently to get all the, the latest information uh, that we can pass on to the small business community. These links uh, for more information on how to calculate first draw and how to calculate second draw. And we have hot links for that as well. We're gonna get additional information supporters. There is the program through uh, the SBA called Lender Match that you can go to. Uh, the US Treasury has additional information on the PPP uh, rules and guidance. Uh, the IRS website on the employee retention tax credit uh, and then there's also specific information uh, from the City of Seattle assistance, including bilingual language support, Spanish, Vietnamese, Korean, Cantonese, Mandarin. Uh, uh, and, and, and let's see, we have two others in addition to that. The, uh, in addition to that, there are uh, other outlets with the Washington State Department of Commerce, as well as through the Washington Small Business Development Center that can help if, we, if you need to have uh, assistance in a different language. Upcoming training and webinars. Uh, we have a whole list of these things that can be found uh, at our, our uh, WSBDC website. We have uh, the PPP application uh, second round uh, coming up on the 26th. On March 5th, we have the uh, loan forgiveness instructions on, on how to apply for loan forgiveness. And then we uh, repeat the, the two, the application process and loan forgiveness process on the 12th and 19th of March for special training and technical assistance, uh, partners and economic development organizations via the Washington Economic Development Council, which is called WIDA. Uh, they have uh, special training every Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock uh, into March. And here is a list of all of our uh, offices throughout Washington State uh, for the Washington Small Business Development Center program. Uh, Cheryl alluded to this early on. Uh, the Eastern Washington uh, contacts that are currently covering the uh, Tri-Cities market as well as uh, Walla Walla. Uh, that, that is John Morosco, who, who was introduced to you earlier as well as John's getting uh, support also from our Yakima office, Moses Lake office, uh, and our Spokane team as well. And with that, Logan, I'm going to uh, just allude to the fact that we have additional slides as part of this PowerPoint that I'm not going to cover in the interest of time uh, that gives detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to fill out the uh, first draw PPP, second draw PPP. And if you attend the loan forgiveness webinar, you'll also receive information, again, detailed instructions on how to apply for the uh, loan forgiveness. So with that, I'm gonna uh, conclude my remarks and, and turn the uh, screen back over to you. And Rebecca, hopefully I, uh, I didn't put you to sleep with that long dissertation. That was an amazing presentation and you have done so much heavy lifting for business owners. Um, that's an amazing resource for them. So I'm impressed with oh, the excellent well, presentation. Well, thank you. I need to credit my colleague, Steve Burke from the uh, Western Washington Regional Manager and Jenny Sockle from the SBA, who from day one, as soon as the information was available, poured over this with you know, hours by hours in developing this, this slide deck. Yeah, I don't know how many different websites you had to go to to cross-reference and check all that information, but um, that's an incredible resource for business owners without question. 
Well, thank you. So at this time, uh, Logan, do you, do you want to continue or do you want uh, Rebecca just to go ahead and, and give us some additional information? Well, Hello, there. everyone. Thank you for that content. Apologies, I was having some issues on my end. Um, all right, so everyone's information is in the chat box. It looks like we didn't have any questions roll in quite yet, but um, I just want to let everyone know there was a lot of content we covered. It was a fantastic presentation, great content again. Um, so this will be on our Facebook page for everyone to go through and review um, at their convenience. Um, again, feel free to take a screenshot of the information in the chat uh, box. Um, if you need to contact anyone with questions, um, I want to say thank you to our presenters today. Um, Rebecca, Ron, John, and Cheryl, thank you all for coordinating this great presentation, um, and thank you for being here today.